guys and gals. Scott X1307. Uh, back again. Uh, got another flea market haul. Um, a couple of uh, things from Second Charles. Um, but uh, went to the flea market this past weekend. Uh, we were getting some sleet and stuff Friday night. And uh, an area of the flea market they were showing, they were getting a lot more than uh, where I live. But uh, so I got, I got up there kind of late. I didn't expect uh, much to be going on early. I didn't get there at about 10 o'clock, and yeah, I missed out on a bunch of stuff. Um, he said that it they didn't they didn't really get any bad weather uh, up in that area either. And he was there at like seven in the morning, and there were people already waiting. Uh, so, um, there was not a single Silver Age book, um, in the, uh, the price books, uh, when I got there. <clears throat> they had been picked clean, um, so I found some pretty neat stuff, um, but, uh, nothing spectacular. So, uh, we'll start off here. I did find this, um. And with the the announcement of Spider-Man uh, joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe for a couple of movies, um, I've noticed uh, these issues have started going up in price a little bit. Uh, this is Avengers 318. I think it's uh, 316, 17, and 18. Uh, Spider-Man in, and that's where he becomes a reserve member of the Avengers. I picked this up for a quarter. Uh, second Charles, I picked this up. Uh, what if number 22, uh, Dr. Doom had become a hero? Sounded pretty cool. Uh, book's in uh, pretty good shape. It's only a buck. And then I found uh, Amazing Spider Man uh, Annual 16. With the uh, first appearance of uh, uh, Monica Rambo as the uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, this book is in uh, probably about fine condition. The um, the only real problem with the book is uh, this mark here, but that's common on uh, a lot of older books, especially I think this is a new stand as well. So um, even up through the 80s, that was a common thing. Um, and there is a a small tear here. Uh, not quite a quarter of an inch. Uh, other than that, book's in good shape. It was only a dollar, so picked it up. Um, now on to some DC, cheap DC books. Uh, picked up this three-issue storyline. Uh, it ran through uh, Superman titles in the uh, early 90s. Yeah, 1990. It's the uh, Dark Knight over Metropolis with Superman and Batman. There's part one and Superman 44. Uh, part two, Adventures of Superman 467. I'm sorry, I had to point this out. Is it just when I was a teenager? This always made me laugh. These two guys did a lot of work on the Superman titles. It's uh, Dan Jurgens and Brett Breeding. When they sign their names, Jurgens Breeding. Does that not sound funny? Okay. <laughs> uh, we always laughed when I was a teenager. Anyway, there's part three of that. Uh, Action Comics 654. That was pretty cool. Now, uh, I found a copy of Batman 497 where uh, Bane uh, breaks his back breaks Batman's back uh, and this is the uh, edition uh, you know with the this I believe the, the direct edition with the uh, half black and white cover little sleeve um, it's in pretty good shape for a quarter I figured what the heck um, I've already got a copy um, I, I picked up uh, back in 92 or whatever when it came out but for a quarter I figured what the heck uh, this was really cool and kind of a surprise to find in the quarter books um, this is the uh, Lucifer preview uh, on the back is a Swamp Thing preview 
but uh, yeah this book is going for a little bit on eBay because of the announcement of possibly maybe sometime in the future of a TV show or a movie or something so, figured what the heck and that's uh, that's all the Marvel and DC books on to some indie goodness I uh, picked up uh, Death Rattle number 13 from Kitchen Sink. Pretty trippy cover there. Uh, I thought this was neat. Um, not sure if this is their first appearance or first title. Uh, it's X Mutants number one from Eternity. Um, this is by Ron Lim. He did a lot of work on Silver Surfer through the uh, 90s. <coughs> And uh, this is the indie title he created uh, years before that. Um, they were, of course, in eternity absorbed into Malibu um, in the late 80s, early 90s and all. Um, and like I said, I'm not sure if that is, if that's their, the X-Mutants, if that's their first title. It may have been with another uh, smaller company before that, but still I thought it was pretty cool for a quarter. Um, Another issue of Grendel. This is uh, Grendel number 7 from uh, Comico. I thought this was neat. Uh, another issue of Albedo. Uh, this is uh, number 0. Um, but uh, it was only a quarter. So it's still cool. But uh, it's a uh, fourth printing. Yeah. Deluxe fourth printing. But, oh well, still pretty cool. Still, uh, those books are not easy to find. They're not worth much uh, unless you get the Osagi uh, Ojimbo issue, but still they're pretty cool. Uh, this I thought was really cool. I remember um, back in the day, this book uh, used to go for uh, probably about 10 or 15 bucks um, for a couple of months. But I uh, found this in a quarter bin. Dark Horse Comics, Starship Troopers number one. Um, adaptation of the movie. Admit it, you like the movie. Everybody does. Uh, this was pretty cool too. It's uh, Steve Niles. It's from Dark Horse, uh, Freaks of the Heartland. Uh, this is issue number one. And issue number two with some kind of freak on the cover. Uh, those are pretty neat. Uh, found another issue of Lone Wolf and Cub, which I've been picking up. Um, been finding them at the flea market for a quarter, and I just I can't pass those up for a quarter. Uh, this is issue 27. Neat stuff. And uh, last quarter book. Uh, this is pretty cool. I remember this book at one time was you know like 60, 80 dollars uh, back in the 90s. Um, it's still it's not it's still not a quarter book. I don't think, but uh, I mean you can find them cheap. It's Early Valiant, Rye, number one. Uh, one of my favorite characters from Valiant back in the 90s. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, really, you know, an original, unique character. So, um, here you go, what the hell, you know, for a quarter, pick up issue number one. Um, can't remember if I had the first issue of this uh, previously or not, but uh, either way. Alright, on to uh, priced books. I found some pretty neat stuff. Nothing, uh, nothing very wowing. Nothing spectacular. Uh, I did manage to pick up uh, GI Joe issue 61, Mike Zek cover, um, the spotlight cover. Um, it's only two bucks. Pretty neat. You had a couple other issues of them there, and they, but they were like four or six dollars. Uh, I passed up on those. Picked up two copies of this Avengers 317. Um, I figure I found 318 for a quarter. I picked this up. I uh, had two of them for a dollar each. Both of them in uh, fine, very fine condition. Uh, again, this is part of the storyline where uh, Spidey originally uh, became reserve member of the Avengers. Uh, this is the, I believe, the oldest book that I picked up. Uh, it's Giant size Fantastic Four number six uh, with Annihilus. 
Um, you know, it says special birth of Reed and Sue's son. I should have looked this up. I'm not sure if that is Franklin Richards' first appearance. Um, should have looked that up. Yeah, it's it's square bound spine. It's starting to it's starting to uh, to shift a little bit, but uh, not too bad. Definitely seen a lot worse. Um, there's some other little wear and tear to it, but uh, not bad shape. Four dollars, pretty cool. <clears throat> now, I found some neat uh, DC books, but they're all pretty uh, uh, pretty new, um, not uh, current titles or anything. But these are from uh, you know late '90s or uh, 2000s. Found three issues of this uh, neat Batman miniseries. Unfortunately, somebody had already grabbed number one, I guess. I don't know why they left the the other three issues, but um, I picked them up. I figure it's pretty easy to find number one. Uh, it's Batman, Bane of the Demon. And, uh, Ra's al Ghul. It's issue number two. Issue number three, I believe with Talia on the cover. And issue number four. Dollar each. They would tell. Alright, and last three books. Uh, this is pretty cool. I saw this and uh, definitely had to pick these up. I've heard a lot about this uh, story. Plus, it's in DC Else Worlds, which are usually pretty neat. Uh, but this is uh, Alan Davis and Mark Farmer. It's uh, Justice League The Nail. Uh, got book one, and these are Else Worlds prestige format, so these are thick books. They were probably like five, six, seven dollars uh, cover price. Um, got it for three bucks. All these are 25% off like always and um, Was lucky enough to find the full Miniseries and there's issue number two. And these covers are awesome uh, And issue number three it's Supposed to be a very good read uh, looking forward to uh, cracking those open All right, so I did pick up a couple of other things uh, first and second to Charles. Um, I shouldn't have, but I grabbed another one of the pop vinyls. Um, let's see, I figured what the heck. I traded a few more comics in, got some store credit. Um, There's some stuff that I really, really didn't want. Some old 90s stuff. Um, but I picked up the uh, Magneto uh, bobblehead from the X Men line. Um, last week, I, or. Yeah, last week picked up the Mystique, and um, these are, in my opinion, the, the two best looking figures of the X-Men line. I may pick up a Professor X at some point, I'm not sure. I really gotta, gotta cool it with these damn figures there. They're, uh, they cost a lot more than a quarter, <laughs> but they're pretty neat, so I figure what the heck. Um, it's Magneto, my uh, second... <coughs> Second favorite villain, one of my top three or four favorite comic book characters overall, so um, I picked that up. And then I picked up two movies at the flea market <coughs> from the uh, same vendor, the uh, same guy, comic book guy. He has old uh, VHS tapes and he has uh, DVDs and things like that as well. Um, DVDs you can get for a dollar to three dollars depending on what they are. And the VHS ta tapes you get for a quarter to a dollar. Um, I saw these two and, and uh, uh, had to pick them up. Luckily, my VCR is still working. I uh, grabbed this. Uh, it's from like 1975. It's called Island at the Top of the World. Um, basically, um, this guy here, he's a British lord. His son has... Uh, went off in seek of adventure and he takes off on an expedition to the Arctic <coughs> disappears they end up finding an island uh, in the Arctic that's uh, volcanically active and has a lost colony of Vikings it's actually pretty uh pretty cool I uh, love these old movies like that and this movie believe it or not was actually nominated for an Academy Award in 1975 for best art direction and set decoration even B movies. <laughs> and I saw this, had to pick this up. Loved this movie as a kid. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. 
Uh, great classic. Uh, Captain Nemo. Uh, it's got a giant squid in it. Uh, Kirk Douglas. So definitely had to pick that up. They were a buck a piece. I don't know VHS, but uh, you know some of these old movies you can't find on DVD yet. Um, uh, I definitely uh, haven't been released on Blu-ray. I don't know about these two, but a lot of these older movies they just uh, they haven't re-released yet. <clears throat> but uh, it's pretty cool. They both work, and uh, I've already watched Island Top of the World. It was pretty cool, and I'm gonna rewatch this soon because it's just a great movie. So, all right, everybody, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate you hanging there on a boring video with really nothing exciting in this haul, but uh, some pretty neat stuff. So like always, I appreciate it. Uh, everybody take care, and uh, just keep hanging in there. Um, until next time, y'all. Uh, keep reading those books. Later.